scheme and what play by Corey Cooper to put Havlock ahead, seven to nothing against Orange. You're listening to HillsboroughSports.com. you need whenever you need it that's what you'll find at handy andy's located at 7136 highway 57 in caldwell serving their customers for 32 years customers can look at a wide variety of merchandise from quick snacks to grocery items and there's even hardware sit back on a summer day and enjoy a cool drink and chat with some friends and if you don't have any then make some remember the name handy andy's you'll find their stock complete and their service extra friendly it's not your everyday convenience store it's handy andy's located at 7136 36 Highway 57 in Caldwell. Touchdown run by number four. That was Solomon Bellagotti who scored. And now the sky kick taken at the 31. And a fair catch called by Keyshawn Thompson. And now, for the first time all year, Orange faces adversity in the second half. How will they answer this as they are down 7-0? The closest that Orange has come to trailing in the second half this year came way back on August 26th against Northern when they were down 8. There was also a game here at Northwood. They did trail in the second half of that one, but that was very, very brief. It was 3-0. But Orange scored on the very first possession of the second half, and Northwood never got a touchdown in the game. Well, Jeff, and also let's keep in mind, they're down 7 nothing. It's not like it's an insurmountable lead, you know. So Here's they're fine. Schmidt's going to step back, and now he's going to gun it deep down the field. He's looking for Beasley, and that pass is incomplete. A couple of Havelock players collided with each other going for the <laughs> interception. On coverage was number 80, Dominic Madden. He and Montrese Gatling collided going for the ball. Yeah, well, and Jackson right there, Jeff, he kind of threw that one up for grabs again. He needs to tighten it back up a little bit. I know they're having a success with that uh, kind of bootleg rollout passing game right there. But, you know, these de these defensive tackles for Havelock, they're going to get used to that. And they're starting to push through there, you know. And if he's going to roll out, he needs to keep rolling out and not stop like that. But he needs to rein in the passing game a little bit. Evans goes to the right, wetted to the left. Wilson will be in the backfield along with Beasley and Puckett. Second down and ten. Havlock up 7-0. Here's Schmidt stepping back to throw. Meets pressure now. He's going to throw under duress. It's caught, but a very short gain to Beasley as he was taken down quickly by Andre Scatling. And the gain is good for we got about two, uh, two, two yards. Two and a half yards, yeah. Actually, good decision right there by Jackson. I'm not sure Jackson was throwing it to Marvante. I think he might have been throwing that one out of bounds. <laughs> he was running for his life right there, but you're starting to see – there's pressure. These uh, defensive tackles, I think it's real, Will Spotsville and Chris Mazik are really starting to get some pressure in that middle, and they're really making Jackson Schmidt, you know, uncomfortable. They make the move his feet. I think we got a Northwood player down. Got a Havlock player down. What did I say, four Northwood? Four, yeah, Northwood. Okay, I apologize. <laughs> well, the uniforms kind of look the same. Sorry about that. So we're going to pause for a timeout here as you're listening to HillsboroughSports.com. Stay with us. Where did you say we're going after church today? Oh, Jay's Chicken Shack on North Churton Street in Hillsboro. What's there? Oh, they have deep pressure fried chicken. It's a delicious recipe with great flavoring. They have great grilled chicken pitas. You can put gyro meat on there with a salad. That's great. I can't wait to. Plus, they have breakfast all day, including Saturday and Sunday, and they have delicious beef ribs, hamburgers, and chicken gizzards. Okay, thanks, Dad. I have to get dressed. And for dessert, they have homemade banana pudding and peach cobbler, plus Hershey's ice cream, which you'll just love. Thank you, Dad. They customize also all their sandwiches with whatever toppings you want, and now they deliver within a three-mile radius. They're family-owned in Hillsboro. Mom! Jay's Chicken Shack is open seven days a week at 646 North Churton Street in Hillsboro. Call 919-732-3591 and ask about their catering services. Here's a pass by Schmidt down the middle, and it is intercepted. It is picked off by Jeff Harris. 
Interception thrown by Jeff Harris, caught by Jeff Harris, and he returns it to the Orange 45. That yeah. is a tough one. Yeah, Jeff, and it was third down and eight. They were kind of deep in their own field position right now. But we've been talking about these last few plays right now. That wasn't a bad pass by Jackson Schmidt, but you're throwing it to a running back down the seam. You know, I don't, I don't, I just don't like who you're throwing it to. Ryan Puckett never caught a ton of passes, and um, you know, if you're going to make that throw, you know, Peyton Wilson, Cody Evans, Kendall Winton, where are these guys at? So first down, Cooper will keep it himself, and he is belted at the line, and he is dropped. Didn't get much out of that at all. Got maybe two. So now. Really, Orange has been forced to play left-handed here because they've gotten away from their comfort zone for probably the first time all year. The Panthers not used to having to air it out to get back in the games, but their running game has been shut down in this contest here. And now will be second down and seven after Cooper picked up three more. He's coming up on... 70 yards rushing in the game as the quarterback. He's going to keep it himself again, going around left end past the 40. Oh, and Peyton Wilson hit him hard. Yeah, right there. He, he got uh, got popped right there by Peyton. But and once again, you know, I think he got about two yards. And uh, Cooper right now, he's keeping the ball himself. He's a gamer. That kid wants, wants the ball, wants right. to be the one that makes the play. But Peyton came up and popped him a good one right there. He's got 16 carries in this game, does Cooper. So it'll be third down and five, 2.28 remaining here. Things looking tough for Orange, down 7-0. Well, this is a big play right here. You got third and five at the 40, I believe it's about the 40-yard line. This is going to be a big, big uh, possession right here for Cooper Orange. Cooper now steps back to throw, meeting pressure, goes far sideline, pass, incomplete, and a flag goes down, I believe, for intentional grounding. I think so, yeah. Yeah, Peyton Wilson. came in and closed him nicely right there. And that's a big penalty if it is intentional grounding right there because that's law to down and going to make it fourth down. Yep. There wasn't anybody out there. Yeah. Yep. There wasn't anybody out there. You know, you can't make that play right there. But um, but that right there, the big thing is not the yardage, Jeff. It's also the loss of down. And that's a big, big penalty right there for Havelock. Loss of down at five yards. Havelock had the ball after the interception at the 43 of Orange. Now they're back at their own 43. And got, and got, excuse me, Jeff, but Peyton Wilson, well, he exploded on that play right there. Yeah. He really, like, he made up about eight yards in a quarter of a second right there to put the pressure on him. Jeff Harris will go back. He just made the interception. Now he'll go into punt. Standing back at the 31. Takes it. Kick is away. Good high kick. Wilson can't return this one. He'll bounce at the 20, and it's going to roll laterally at the 20 and stay there. With 2.01 remaining, Orange comes up with a huge defensive play in this game, forcing an intentional grounding penalty and it's going to be first and ten for Orange and the offense has to get cranked up this is the latest Orange has been getting shut out in a game this year the Panthers did not score an offensive touchdown on Labor Day when they beat Riverside 14 nothing and well yeah Jeff it's one of those things where you've heard in sports before you know they're waiting for them Havelock's waiting for them you know they're not going to wait forever though so if Orange wants to get something done now good a time as any Orange out of the double wing with Schmidt as quarterback. First and ten. Orange going left to right down 7 nothing. Hand off. Beasley tries to find room around the left side. And he's got room. Pass to 25. 50. 45. 40. He's going. Orange. Yeah, right there, Jeff. You saw him. Arvante. It was that out of that wing back. They made it to the left. They've been running that play all night. They saw something. They had the blockers in front of him right there. Marvante, he saw the one block, cut it back upfield, and when he did that, he showed some speed I haven't seen all year because he ran away from everybody right there. And Marvante Beasley scores the first touchdown of the game for Orange with a minute 47 and changes things in a heartbeat. Huge extra point by Francisco McKinley. Snap, spot, kick, up, and... It's Cisco, goal. Cisco. Francisco put it through. And Orange, in a blink of an eye, has turned their own fortunes around. 147 remaining in the third quarter, and we are tied. 7-7, Orange and Havelock on HillsboroughSports.com.
Carolina Hilltopper Lacrosse Program is a proud sponsor of HillsboroughSports.com. They've been teaching the game of lacrosse to young men in Orange County for over six years with great results for many players who enjoy successful high school and collegiate careers. 49 players have played with the Hilltopper Lacrosse Program, then gone on to play at NCAA schools in the last five years alone. If you want to play select lacrosse with veteran coaches, check out HilltopperLAX.com and register for the upcoming fall season. An 80-yard touchdown run by Mervante Beasley. Orange's longest run of the game up to that point. Seven yards by Mervante <laughs> Beasley. That one beat it out. Now Monte, Demonte, Marvante with 98 yards, and it's a game again. It's 7-7. Yeah. Seven, seven. yeah, Jeff, and they, uh, they ran that play several times. They liked something about it. It worked in. Here's the kickoff. It's taken at the 25-yard line, running laterally. It's Lockhart over to the 30. Lockhart still going to the 35. Moore tries to push him out of bounds, and he does. Now a, a flag late flag over there comes too. in. Let's see what we have here. And actually, Jeff, one of uh, Havelock's coaches told me that uh, that the uh, Lockhart is going to Navy on a on wow. to play football. Well, I'll tell you, Navy is getting a lot of players from the southeastern part of the state. They had one score against East Carolina last week who went to Terry Sanford. And got a personal foul against Orange. Oh, my heavens. And Havelock now is going to start Great well field position. I mean, just stupid. You can't play stupid football in the playoffs. And I'm not sure what happened. We were a long way from the play, but I'm sure the refs had it right. You know, you can't get a dumb penalty like that. So Havelock gets it right back in Orange territory, not far from where they started their last drive, which fizzled out after a huge couple of plays by the Orange linebacking core. It's now Havelock with a first and 10 at the Orange 45. It was a late hit to the far sideline. And it looked the whole, the whole coverage, the coverage possession right there for Orange. They all look kind of lazy and lackadaisical. And here's Cooper. He's going to keep it himself up to the right, but he can't get far at all. Stone gotta, Edwards, Ryan Sellers, and they're going to stop his forward progress after a gain of only one on the play. Yeah. I tell you what, I wouldn't want to run into Stone Edwards or Noah Rogers. He just ran into both of them right there. But the little Cooper kid's tough. I mean, he bounced off him. They put him, didn't put him on the ground. He's a fun player to watch. So gain of one to make it second down and nine with a minute ten remaining third quarter. Havelock going right to left. Cooper in the backfield with Hutchinson and four wide receivers. And Cooper will look the throw. Looking, looking, meeting pressure again. He'll throw it far sideline, and it is caught close to the first down. And that should get it to him. Quinzel Lockhart. Quinzel Lockhart made the grab. It's going to be close to the first down. Yeah, I think he, he was right on the sticks. I think, yeah, they got a little bit less than a yard to go. Yeah, it's going to be third down and one. Ball at the 36. Third down and one. Now Cooper runs under center, calls his own number. He's got the first down. Yeah, second time they've run that play right there, Jeff. That's typically what they go with. They put their H back in there, and that's Kendall Frazier. Christian Camps is also an H back, and he's played sparingly tonight. But it's a first down here for Havelock at the 34 of Orange after a big personal foul penalty. Well, just the whole thing. I was watching Orange's pursuit on the kickoff, you know, and they just look, they looked kind of like they were still over here celebrating a touchdown. First down and 10. Cooper has the snap goes over his head. The ball's way back at the 45, and he'll have to dive on it way back in Havelock territory. That has hurt Havelock at times, and the center, Howie Baldry, snapped one that Andre the Giant wouldn't have been able to reach, and that's the end of the third quarter. A huge loss. And it's going to be second and long when we come back. And we've got as active an atmosphere as you can imagine right now. Orange with the lead, with tied rather, tied up. 7-7 on HillsboroughSports.com. Stay with us. Second and 37. The Deer Pushers Association of America is a group dedicated to raise funds in support of educational programs, wildlife habitat enhancement, and acquisition, and the preservation of the shooting sports and hunting tradition for future generations. They serve Northern Orange, Southern Person, and all of Central North Carolina. To learn more about the Deer Pushers Association of America, contact Skinny Laws or Seth King directly. The Deer Pushers Association of America, Killing tomorrow's trophies today. 